Good news, I'm not dead. Bad news, this isn't a roundup video. You know, ever since Mother Nature forced me into an involuntary hiatus from video production, I had a lot of time to workshop potential topics I had on the back burner. One of those topics was a retrospective on one of my very first videos, Why I Don't Like Pinkie Pie. Upon release, the video went relatively unnoticed, as I was still a very fresh face in the community at the time, and I hadn't gained an audience yet. But once I did, a couple months down the line, it quickly gained a lot of attention, and my distaste for Pinky became one of the things I was most known for. The idea of revisiting this topic to see how my thoughts had changed had crossed my mind several times, mainly whenever a good Pinky episode came out, as I would preemptively assume that it would mark an improvement in her character, like how Fluttish I improved after season 4. But every time a good Pinky episode comes out, the next one ends up putting her right back where she started. The idea was eventually scrapped. After all, what's the point in revisiting? Visiting the video if my thoughts hadn't changed. But with the release of the season 8 episode Yakety Sax, I realized that there was still something I could do with this. To put it in perspective, I was 17 when I made Why I Don't Like Pinkie Pie. My thoughts were heavily disorganized, the video itself was poorly recorded and poorly edited, the intro was nothing but me waffling about how it was only my opinion when it really did not need to be said, and there was a significant lack of focus in my points. I was just rattling off random aspects of Pinkie that I didn't like. It was a symptom that plagued many of the videos from my first year of YouTube, and this video suffered from it the most. And when I rewatch it now, at age 21, I see that there's a lot that needs to be fixed. So, while my overall opinion of Pinky hasn't changed, what has changed is my ability to articulate why I hold that opinion. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. Now, if you're familiar with my work, you know that there are many things that bother me about Pinky. The writers using her randomness as a stand-in for actual humor, her horrible habit of screeching at the top of her lungs every now and then, her general incompetence, etc, etc. But I've come to realize that those aspects of her are minor. At least, compared to the one major issue I have with her. When I think about all the Pinky episodes that I consider to be her absolute worst, Party of One, A Friend Indeed, Pinky Pride, Rock Solid Friendship, and Yakety Sacks, which we'll save for later because... Jesus, tap dancing Christ. Their conflicts all revolve around one thing. Pinkie Pie is aggressively needy. I had touched on this in the original video where I implied that she was codependent, and while that probably wasn't the most accurate term in hindsight, 17 year old me was onto something for once. Pinkie Pie reacts very badly when there is even the slightest possibility that someone either doesn't like her or doesn't want to be around her. And the extreme she goes to when those possibilities arise send bad implications at best and are explicitly terrible at worst. Her friends don't want to go to one of her parties after just having one with her last night, so she falls into a depression and stalks them. This old guy she just met doesn't want to be friends with her, so she repeatedly harasses him, breaks into his house, and tries to force him into a friendship he doesn't want. One of her friends wants someone else to plan their birth anniversary for once, so she falls into another depression and almost gives up on her career. Her sister hasn't made any close friends in her new home, so she tries to force her into a friendship with someone else. Noticing a pattern here? I get that part of Pinky's brand of humor is exaggeration and hyperbole. Rarity is quite similar in that regard, but the difference is that the level of hyperbole Pinky goes to takes it to some uncomfortable levels. When Rarity has a moment, it's just that, a moment. And in the rare occasion where it isn't, its effects are usually isolated to herself. When Pinky has a moment, it's an entire episode and it comes at the expense of other people's comfort. A common defense I hear is that these flaws make Pinky relatable. Worrying that someone doesn't like you or that someone may not like one of your friends is something that many people deal with. The problem with this argument is the same problem with the argument that Fluttershy's shyness pre-season 5 was relatable. While the insecurity at the root of their behavior may be relatable, the actions as a result of those insecurities are anything but. Now at this point, I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't mention the mod couple. Pinky's neediness was on full display in that episode, so it should be criticized too, right? Here's the thing though. While it's absolutely true that Pinky's antics in that episode fall in line with the behaviors I've described, what the mod couple does well that no other Pinky episode has done is actively discourage her behavior. Someone finally sat her down and said, hey, what you're doing is not okay, stop it. This is exactly how you handle a situation like this, by pulling the person aside and letting them know that their behavior is a problem. Unlike, say, Yakety Sacks. When I saw the reactions to this episode and how so many people were talking about how it was one of the worst in the season, I was… intrigued. Usually the fandom is pretty tolerant of Pinky's antics, so if a Pinky episode comes out and even they don't like it, then it must be bad. And yeah, it was bad. 
The biggest gripe I have with this episode isn't Pinky falling into yet another moat fest because her friends told her that she wasn't good at the bagpipes. Actually, it's called a yo- I know what it's called, Kevin. I am not pronouncing that shit. What really got on my nerves was how all her friends bent over backwards to coddle her and encourage her to play again, even when it's made abundantly clear that it's not only a loud disturbance, but actively gets in the way of people's livelihoods. Never mind the fact that Pinky could have played somewhere where she wouldn't disturb someone, or take some lessons from someone that knows how to play the damn thing. After all, it doesn't matter how many people's lives you ruin as long as you're pleased with yourself, cause that's a fantastic lesson to teach the children, right? But aren't friends supposed to make sacrifices for each other? We can't like everything our friends do. Yeah, Kevin, but there's a line. When it gets to the point where those sacrifices involve your comfort or well-being, that's a problem. A friendship where all you're doing is making sacrifices isn't a friendship. Pinkie Pie is the type of person that is just exhausting to be around. If you're not constantly keeping her happy, she'll pendulum swing into a moping mess. If you don't want to be friends with her, then she'll constantly needle you into submission. Fortunately, I haven't had to deal with someone like this since high school, and I'm glad I never had to deal with anyone like that since. As I was writing this video, I was expecting to be a lot angrier when it came time to record it. But once I did start recording, instead of mad, I felt… relieved. For a long time, despite knowing what it was about Pinky that bothered me, I couldn't figure out the root of it. But Season 8 finally helped me pinpoint it, and in a weird way, I'm happy about that. I never liked being unable to articulate myself, so writing this video was cathartic in a way. I know there's a very small subset of people that think I take enjoyment out of ragging on Pinky and send me death threats as a result of it, but to be quite honest, there's nothing to gain from pleasing people like that. I would much rather figure out why I don't like something than just ignore that and pretend to like it. I do genuinely hope that Pinky gets better, but the show's almost over. Even if she does get better, it won't last for much longer until the show ends. By then, it's just too little too late. The best I can do is just put up with her until Friendship is Magic ends, and when G5 comes around, hopefully she'll have a better characterization. Until then, she's just… <sighs> tiring. So what did you think of this video? Swarm that comment section below and bug me on social media. Until next time, keep it sketchy folks.